Hi, let's do a lower body foam rolling routine to help you feel amazing. And chances are, if you are watching this video, you're feeling a little bit tight or stiff in your legs and hips. We are going to take care of that with some really feel good moves. Hi, welcome to Wealthy Boss. My name's Mariah. Every week or so, I bring you bar, yoga, Pilates, and strength training workouts. However, it's so important that we're doing the recovery work that is going to help us heal and be at our best and able to bring our A game for our workouts and for life. And foam rolling is one of my absolutely favorite ways to do that. Today, we're going to be starting on our seat. So go ahead and swing those legs out from under you. I'm using the Rolga foam roller. You can use any foam roller that you may have. I'm going to find my legs about in the middle section of the calves on that foam roller. Now I'm going to walk my hands in a little close to my hips, so maybe about six or eight inches from my hips. And I'm gonna to start to lift the hips slightly off the ground and start to roll a little bit towards my body and back. I'm feeling it's a little bit far away still, so I'm gonna move my hands in. And just a gentle rock back and forth. I am using, as I said, the Rolga. So I've got some nice little indentations where Kind of that midsection of my calf muscle can nestle into, and I can get a little bit more into the sides surrounding the calf muscle. We want to avoid rolling all the way behind the knee. We're, keep, we're stopping just short. We never want to roll on a joint in foam rolling. It's the tissue that we're trying to get into. If at any point your shoulders need a little break, you can drop those hips down. You can always roll out those wrists. Now notice I'm only going about halfway, we're going to pick that up again, only going about halfway down the leg because I don't want to overstress my shoulders. So we're going to split those larger muscles into two zones, taking some deep breaths. I'm going to relax the shoulders again because I'm using a lot of upper body strength to lift my body up and this time. Let's lift up. We're going to, instead of rolling forward and back on the roller, we're going to shift our legs side to side. It's subtle. <laughs> and because I'm on the Rolga, I have these ridges that are ooh, making that feel extra fine. I can even do this with my um, hands and hips on the ground. That's going to take a little bit of the weight out of the shoulders and wrists. And if you're very, very tight in your calves, this is going to be all you need. I'm already feeling that without the added weight of my body. So this is our cross fiber action. And it is oh so amazing how much is going on in those calves. All right, enough of that torture. This time we're gonna walk our hands a little bit further back, an inch or two. This time preparing to roll that roller towards the ankles once we have those hips lifted. So we're rolling towards the ankles and back. Sometimes this can be a little bit more intense because we're further down the lever. We have more of our weight, the weight of our leg bones and muscles to intensify the compression. Make sure to take some nice, big, deep breaths to facilitate the brain body response that it is safe to be in this relaxed and open position. I'm gonna relax those hands, relax those shoulders, Catch my breath just in case I was holding on to it. And then again, let's roll towards the ankles, but not on them. Deep inhale, exhale. The breath is an integral part for getting more fully into those tissues, rewiring the brain to not always be in that protective defensive mode. All right, let's set the hips down, relax the shoulders and the wrists. One more time, we're gonna try that cross fiber action. So we lift up the hips. I'm still in the middle of my calves and I'm just rolling side to side. Oh my gosh, so much is happening here. 
Oh, that's about all I can take. So we want to keep our pain threshold. You know, it's a good hurt, but we want to keep that threshold kind of under a seven or an eight, because if we're really pushing with a no pain, no gain mentality, then the body starts to kind of compensate and resist and you end up not getting quite as good of the work. So take your time. You can come back to this video anytime you like. It's better to do a little bit every day than to try to make yourself miserable in one swoop. All right. This is only if you felt like you wanted to know how to make it more intense. Most of you, especially if you're not used to foam rolling, would have no desire to do that. However, if you do, you could have one leg crossed over the other with the calf in the middle of your foam roller. So again, on the Rolga, I have these little dips. So my calf is going kind of nestling into that middle dip. And I could cross my ankles and I could roll that way. Notice how I'm just barely skimming my bum off the mat because this is already so intense. I've added more weight from that top leg. I'm concentrating the compression onto the bottom leg. How's that going for you? I'm working in that top zone. Do you want to try half the side to side movement? I'm going to relax for just a second. All right, why don't we just try it with our hips on the ground with one weight leg weighting the other one down. I'm getting plenty right here. And then I work my hands a little further back and we're gonna roll towards the ankle but not on it. Again, oh my goodness, that's a lot going on. So our calves are one of those things that I can kind of set my bum down at the front and back if that's a little hard to do from this position. But our calves are one of those sneaky areas that are almost always tight in most people, especially the more active we are. But it's not one of the places that we tend to complain about the most. We usually end up feeling tightness or stiffness or dehydration in the fascia in other places in the body. Okay, I've had just about enough fun with that. So I'm going to move on to side two. So I'm just going to roll it a little bit closer. Middle section of the calf, front leg crosses over back. My hands moving just a little bit closer to my hips to move towards the knee, but not behind it. And again, notice if your hands are way out here and you're overextending in the shoulders, move them in a little bit closer, and that's going to feel nicer. Let's return to that deep breath in case you've lost it, you've been holding your breath, or it's become more shallow. Let's find the middle of the calf. Maybe the hips just come down and we rock side to side. Ooh, especially when we've got those little hills and valleys on my Rolga. Or if you have one of those textured foam rollers that gets, gets in there, can really be a lot of sensation. All right, my hands are moving a little bit further back. I'm gonna roll down towards that lower zone, single leg. And again, this is so intense, I might just kind of hop my bum up and then set it down again. So you could try that. If you're on a hard floor, you could also just kind of scoot yourself. Big breaths though. Signaling to your body that you're safe. This is a position that's okay to be in, even if you're Silently screaming in the inside. Remember, back off if you feel like the intensity level is pushing past an eight or a nine. <laughs> One more time, let's find that middle section just side to side. You might feel that calf muscle kind of move or shift or jump underneath you, that's okay. Exploring what's there. Ooh! Okay, like I said, had about enough of that. Just in case that created a little bit of uh, tension in the wrist, let's just shake them out a little bit, kind of shake them high, shake them low, shake them out of the side, and in front of you. All right, we're gonna be moving to a prone position, meaning we're facing the floor to work into the fronts of our legs, our shins, and our quads. So we'll start with the shins. I'm gonna move to the back edge of my mat. Let's roll that roller a little bit closer to your knees or about, let's say about six inches in front of them. 
we're gonna move to hands and knees, and that foam roller is between your knees and your hands closer to your knees. I'm gonna walk my hands ever so slightly forward in my shoulders to begin, and I'm gonna tuck my toes, lift up, scoop my feet in, and rest my shins on the roller. So I'm not directly on my knees, I'm a little bit forward of them. And then one more time, I'm gonna walk my hands about four inches forward or so. Now I'm gonna start to roll in. So I've got a little bit of a bonus abdominal work here, but mostly it's about feeling those shins and then roll back out. Start to stretch out. So I'm keeping the knees fairly high, but if at any point my abs are getting tired, I can always pop down in between if that's okay on the knees. Let's remind ourselves to take those nice, deep, full breaths. So we do get a little bit of a core workout with our foam rolling too when we're using the full size roller. Mm, that feels good. Anytime those shoulders or wrists start to get tired, you can press it down into a child's pose, just leaving those ankles on the roller if that feels okay. Feels good to stretch out those shoulders. So foam rolling is one of those things that once I get started, I could get going all day long. So let me know if there's other body parts or muscle groups you'd like me to focus on next time. I wanna to try to limit this to lower body today, otherwise I could keep you here all day long. Let's find a couple more and then we'll move on to those quads and the shoulders will get a little bit of a break. Beautiful. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna have the foam roller for our quad series on the back leg because I wanna show you what your variations are with your front leg. A lot of times I have clients say, I don't know how to get into the quads if I just roll both my legs on it. I'm not getting enough compression. I doubt you'll be worried about getting enough compression after this. This is what I've discovered works for me. So my back leg is gonna be the one with the foam roller. I'm gonna be placing it because it'll be a little bit harder for you to see once I'm in this position. I'm gonna be placing it in the center of my thigh or my quadricep. So halfway up between the knee and the hip. And I'm smack dab in the center of the roller. So I've got options here. I'm gonna relax the tops of the toenails down onto the mat. I can have my front leg tucked right next to it so that that instep, her heel, is almost touching the foam roller depending on your anatomy and also the size of your roller. And I'm gonna drop down onto my forearms and then I'm gonna re-tuck those toes once I've found the position. Now I want my hips to be fairly square. So notice if you're kind of dipping over to one side. I'm gonna have my toes tucked initially to help kind of test the waters with how tight I'm feeling. I'm gonna to start to roll towards the hip and then back up. Oh my goodness, I'm feeling so much here already that I think I'll probably do best to keep my toes as a little bit of kind of a training wheel to relieve some of the pressure. <laughs> wow, I'm so tight here. How about you? So I've definitely come to believe that single leg quad rolling is the only way to go if you're serious about getting into that dense, tight tissue. So our fascia can become dehydrated and kind of stuck, the fibers stuck or clustered together for a whole number of reasons. It can be like that due from inactivity, but it can also be due like that due to overactivity and overexertion. So we wanna make sure that we're incorporating these foam rolling routines, no matter what our situation is. Now our quads are very tied into our pelvis and our back position. So if our quads are super tight, that can lead to problems in the hip flexors. It can tip the pelvis forward. 
that can cause low back pain. All right, we're gonna find that middle section and start to roll side to side. So just kind of fan that heel side to side. If you wanted more throughout all this, you could take the leg up and off. My quads are not going to allow me to do that today, at least not if I wanna stay within that kind of six to eight range of intensity. If I did want to intensify, there's a couple other ways I could do that as well. One is I could take that knee into an external rotation. So I went from the shin being tucked under to taking the knee wider than hip width distance. And then I'm in like a little half frog position. That's gonna remove a little bit of the support. So I've got more happening there. All right, I'm in that middle section just for a few minutes if you would like to. We're gonna pump that leg, heel towards the seat. Oh my goodness, so much going on right now. Next time, hold it up and then we wag that shin side to side. Please keep breathing. Oh gosh, let's set that down. Let's just lift ourselves up for a moment. Take that weight off our shoulders. How are we doing? I know it's, it's a lot. It's because we need it. We feel like that because we need this work. So it's good that we're showing up. We're rising to the challenge. We're facing the discomfort, but we're gonna always come at it a little bit gently so we can um, make sure we're getting the full benefit. All right, this time we're gonna move the elbows a little bit forward and then start to roll towards the knee. But again, if you remember from earlier, not on it. Noticing if this feels better or worse for you, it's gonna, the answer will be different for everybody. Return to that deep, fluid, free breathing pattern. You can always hover the toes, point the toes. I don't care to today. Take a break for the shoulders anytime you need it. All right, and then one more time with the, either the front knee in or externally rotated. Little pumping action. Next time we hold it up, side to side. Bring up the quads, bring up the pelvis, the low back. Set it down. And then let's wiggle that shin under us if it was externally rotated. Press back. Let's maybe even just find a little down dog here. Notice if you feel any different one side to the other. And then I'm gonna just roll that way, that roller forward. If you have the uh, kind of opening to sit back on your heels, you could even notice if you feel a difference on that back leg. And we're gonna move into side two now. So you have kind of seen your options now with that free leg. I'm gonna position that roller smack dab in the middle of my thigh, front to right. I mean, sorry, front to back. And then also center left to right. Your back leg can either be tucked completely under the shin, under the thigh, or it could be externally rotated, or you can just start and gauge where you're at and decide from there. You want to push that a little further down. So again, my toes, because my quads are always tight, are gonna kind of hang out as that little kickstand or training wheel. I actually feel I'm a little bit better on this side. But I could always lift my toes up. The only kind of problem with this is we're having to engage and contract the quads a little bit to make that happen. And we do, do want to be able to relax into the tissue. So I'm coming up a little bit higher towards the hip. You can always adjust if you don't feel like you have it quite right. I'm hoping you can still see me in the frame. So how about I move a little further forward in the mat, make sure you can still see me. Noticing where, what portion of the quads are the tightest for you. I think I'm gonna tuck those toes again. You can drag the toenails on the mat for some type of extra compression without having to contract the leg. 
And again, you can take that back knee open into external rotation if you like. All right, I'm gonna pause, make sure my elbows are under my shoulders, give me a little kick and pump. Kick and pump. Next time it's lifted, pause, little sway side to side. Now notice if you're dumping in your belly here, you wanna keep the belly lifted. Make sure you're still breathing, I know, it's so difficult. All right, let's set it down. We're gonna, I'm gonna just reposition that shin under me for a little bit more support. I'm gonna go, let's see, a little bit in um, with those, I'm sorry, a little bit forward with those elbows. I had to think about that for a minute as I go towards the knee, but not on it. And I can, again, play with dragging my toenails down or I can tuck the toes. Reposition those elbows if I need to. I'm on that lower zone of the quad. Breathing. Again, noticing where it feels the most stiff or dense or prickly to you. And then last time, we're almost done with quads. Just a little pumping. Heel towards the seat. Belly's pulling in towards the spine. And then let's go side to side. Yes. Oh, this is such good work for us, for both our bodies as well as our nervous system. All right, extend it long. Let's press up onto those hands and then let's have a seat. Moving to our final zone, which is that of our glutes. I'm gonna go, kind of go at a little bit of a diagonal, a diagonal so you can see what's happening, but you can sit however you can best see me. We're gonna sit on top of that roller, so, because I'm using the roll gut, I wanna make sure my tailbone is nestled right into that middle valley. And let's just do a little bit of simple forward and back to kind of test the waters. So I'm rolling on the upper part of my glutes. I tend to be very tight there. And it's important to just really explore and get to know and understand where our body holds tension, where it might be tight in places we didn't realize that could be actually manifesting in other areas of the body. It's just good understanding. It can help you piece together those puzzle pieces to understand what works best for your body when you're at your most balanced. So I'm coming almost a little bit off the roller, pressing into Kind of that uppermost portion of my quads, or my glutes, pardon me. And then I'm gonna hover right on top of it. Now I'm gonna dip the knees. So I'm leaning back into my hands. They can be closer or further back, depending on how long your arms are. So I'm leaning back. So I'm feeling this now kind of in that gluteus medius, so like at the midsection of my glutes moving towards the outside of the hip. And I'm rolling back and forth on that meaty section of the glutes. My knees are at a diagonal here to find that optimal amount of pressure. Making sure you're still breathing nice and deep. This one at least gives your shoulders a little bit more of a break. They're still supporting a little bit, but that's nice to relax a little bit more. All right, let's come back to the midline. We're not going to the other side just yet. We're going to take um, the outside leg, cross it over. So we're going back to that position in a little bit of a figure four shape and rolling once again. So we can roll forward and back or we can dip down and center. If you're on the rolga and you have those kind of peaks and valleys, you may wanna adjust a little bit to make that more comfortable. But you're getting right into the side of the seat. Maybe you don't come all the way up if you have that little peak standing there. And last one. Lovely, both hips come down and then we dip the hips to the other side. So you can kind of adjust, make sure you're hitting that meaty section on the um, kind of middle side of the glutes, rolling forward and back. No 
noticing where you're tight. Finding your breath if you've lost it. It can be a constant challenge to remember because the body tends to hold its breath when it's in distress. But we want to rewire the brain that it's safe to be in this relaxed position. Let's do one more. Come back to the center. Now cross over and find that little pigeon. Roll forward and back. We've added a little bit more weight so you have more pressure, more compression to then allow a fresh supply of blood to circulate when we come off of it. Good, now let's dip down and up. So the hips are sliding down and up. And again, I'm kind of positioning on my roll guy if I'm coming up on that mountain. And if that's a little too stiff, I can go a little further to the side. Here's two. Here's one. All right, let's roll all the way off. Oh, that felt so good. I'm gonna shake my arms out. That was a little bit intensive for the arms, so let's shake them out or take them side to side, crisscross. And let's just take your palms face up. Feel how you might be a little bit more open now in the hips, the back, the quads, and the seat, the hamstrings. I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, if you are curious about upgrading your foam roller, I have come to really appreciate the Rolga. If you can see, it has little indentations, so um, an indentation in the middle and then deeper little valleys on the outside, allowing you to really customize and intensify the pressure. And I like how the indentation in the middle allows room for your spine, so it cradles your spine so we can keep those vertebra healthy and off the roller and yet get a little deeper sensation into the side, the muscles on the side of the spine, which of course is where we want it to be. So if you'd like um, the Rolga, I will link to a discount code in the description if you would like to check it out for yourself. They're a great company. And if you would like to jumpstart your wellness journey and you need all the things, you need the workouts, you need the recovery work, you need the mind body balance, then I invite you to take my seven day reset for free. I normally charge for it, but it's a whole week of curated bar yoga, Pilates, foam rolling, and Balatone, which is some cardio, making sure everything is completely balanced. We're working strength, flexibility, balance, re musculature release, fascial release, and it is also supplemented by daily mindful moments. They don't take very long, but they're ways to really connect your body, mind, and soul and feel better from the inside out without any crazy amount of commitment. So again, I would love for you to join me in that journey. I would like to offer it to you for free as my VIP YouTube viewer. So check that out and make sure you like this. Um, you hit the like button if you did indeed like it. It helps others take a chance on this. Be sure to stick around, subscribe, check out my other workout videos, and I can't wait to see you next time.